Hello, this is Rob Klaus with the Certified Commercial Property Inspectors Association. I want to talk a little bit about Section 6.5.5 of the COMSOP, specifically Item A. Item A pertains to gas meters. When we're looking at gas meters, they can come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. We'll talk a little bit about that in this video. But the first thing that we really need to talk about is, uh, is the location. When we're looking at gas meters, the first thing we need to, to identify in our report is where they're located. In most cases, they're going to be located outside, outside on the building. Um, if they're located on the inside of a building, then we need to make sure that that, that space that they're in is well ventilated. And I'll tell you why in a, in, in a moment. But if they are outside, uh, then they need to be in a well-protected space. In this particular space that we're in, we're behind a set of curbing and in the landscaping against the building. So they're pretty well protected. If you've been around uh, inspections long enough, you're gonna see gas meters in all kinds of shapes, sizes, and states of, uh, of distress. Distress being a lot of gas meters are located in a, in, in a pathway of either pedestrians walking or uh, vehicle interventions. Uh, vehicle interventions usually involve bumpers. And so uh, if we do have a gas meter that's mounted on the, on the side of a building in a place where a vehicle can come into contact with it, we do need to make sure that they are protected by either bollards or guardrails of some sort. And so that's one of the, one of the more important things that, that we need to, to address as we're walking up to a gas meter. Beyond that, they can come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. They can come in sizes that, that look like a normal residential gas meter, or they can come into shapes and sizes that look like a very large industrial gas meter. Not all gas meters look like residential meters. Some could be very large, some could be very small, some could be like this. This is an inline meter. This is an industrial meter for a large building. This particular building will probably have a lot more gas usage than a smaller building. So we just have another meter in a different configuration, but the parts are still the same. We still have an input, we still have a main shutoff, we still have pressure regulators, and we have a meter device. And so they're not any different than a smaller styled meter. Just do the same process as you would do any, uh, to any other meter. Look for leaks, identify the parts, and make sure it's well protected. Regardless of the type of gas meter, in most cases, the gas meter is owned by the utility company. The gas is being brought into the building from that utility service. In most cases, the, the gas piping is a plastic. And so as the plastic is coming underground, then it has to come up from the ground into the steel that is the rest of our, our piping. Typically, that plastic pipe is without any means of tracing. So we'll often find a wire wrapped around that, that, that plastic pipe. I don't see one in this particular case, but a lot of times that wire is sticking up out of the ground. I think let's talk a little bit about the parts of gas meters uh, before we get on to uh, a lot of the in-depth portions. First, most gas supplied to buildings is low pressure. There are high pressure systems. If it is a high pressure system, there'll be a label here that says high pressure. But in a low pressure gas system, what we don't want is an influx of gas pressure. This is a pressure regulator. What this is, is it's a sealed diaphragm. And if excessive gas pressure comes in, it kind of pushes it out through these ports and these tubes. In this particular case, we've got a lot of gas usage, so we've actually got two pressure regulators on this. It's not unusual to periodically smell gas because that's what they're doing, is they're expelling uh, high pressure gas or, or surplus gas that, 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 that goes past the regulator. Not unlike if you're a musician with a trombone or a trumpet, where we've got to expel a little bit of that, that liquid that goes into your, in, into your bell. This is what this does. Then as we pass through the regulator, there should be shutoff valves. Now in this particular case, I've got four meters here. There's one main shutoff valve that's down low that shuts off the entire assembly, but then each meter has to have its own shutoff valve. These shutoff valves are unique 
because that gives us an opportunity to shut it off with a wrench, not by hand. That keeps people from, from you know, kind of coming in in the middle of the night and shutting things off. But it also allows it to be locked out. And so that's very important. Gas meters should be reasonably level. They should be straight. They should be up off the snow load or out of the ice or, or the landscaping. In this particular case, that's what we have. And so it's not unusual to see them in this configuration. They could be painted the same complementary color as the building, or they could be sitting here in their natural state. But as we go further into the building, we have to think about labeling. But our labeling starts outside. When we look at gas meters, and there's multiple meters, like in this case, we have four tenants in this building. And having gas meters there should be a label for each tenant space, A, B, C, D, one, two, three, uh, whatever, whatever the labeling is for the building, they should be complemented out here. In this particular case, I don't see any labeling. That would be probably the first deficiency that I would probably want right on my report or an issue on the report. Gas piping should also be labeled very clearly for all the people throughout the building. Labeling can happen in two different methods. That gas pipe could be painted yellow through its entire, uh, entire distance through the whole building, or it could be its no normal state, which is typically black iron with a, with a label that says gas supply or gas piping or, or gas in a yellow sticker with black ink every five foot. We rarely find that but that is what's supposed to be. So that's what we're gonna look for as we go through the rest of the building. As we're inspecting the gas meter, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll do our inspection of the gas meter largely or typically as I'm walking through the exterior of the property. I'll come upon the gas meters, and when I'm doing my inspection, I'm, I'm first doing uh, an auditory check. I wanna make sure I'm not making any unusual noises. As gas meters start to age, and especially in the cold weather, you'll start to get them to click or clank, especially in the metering. And so they should be pretty quiet. They shouldn't make a whole lot of noise. It's winter here in, in Colorado, and so we do have a pretty active system. So periodically, you might've heard in the video, the gas actually fight, cycling through here. I'm gonna look, I'm gonna listen. And then I am going to look for my labeling. Again, we've talked earlier that these are not labeled. And then uh, lastly, I'm gonna smell for gas. There's nothing within the CONSOP that says that you have to test for gas, especially using any gas analyzers. You absolutely could. There are a lot of wonderful gas analyzers on the marketplace. You don't have to. Um, you could use something as unsophisticated as soap bubbles or even your nose. And so uh, gas is typically odorless, but a gas smell is added as, from, the, from the distributor. And so if you smell that smell of, of, of natural gas, then that's something you'd wanna note. But you would take a look at everything. This is well attached to the building. It's level, it's up off the snow load. It doesn't make any unusual noises. The only thing I'm gonna be concerned with is in the building. As I'm doing my gas uh, test, or gas inspection on the inside of the building, one of the things I'm gonna, I wanna do is I'm just gonna follow all the gas pipe. One of these meters, because I'm only doing one of the tenant spaces. So one of these meters is gonna occupy my tenant space again, it's not labeled. And then I'm just gonna track all the gas pipe as it migrates through my space that I'm, in, I, I'm inspecting. And I'm gonna watch to make sure it's properly supported, properly labeled either by yellow in color or the, or, the, or the gas pipe sticker. I can also look to make sure that I don't have any impact spots. I can look to make sure I have proper drip legs at the appliances or, or drip legs where, where they're necessary at transitions. And so all those things will be done as I go in on the inside of the building. But here on the outside of the building, my biggest takeaways are, I need to make sure that these gas meters are properly supported outside and not in the impact zone. If they're in the impact zone, properly protected with bollards or guardrails. Think about that as you're going through your inspections and going through the gas portion of your inspections. 6.55 of the COMSOP begins with gas pipes.